What's going on coders and welcome to episode 5 of our slide service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about images on a slides presentation. So image is next in line on our discussion of the page elements. The top six methods that I have for you today are as image, get images, insert image, get content URL, get source URL, and finally replace. So let's jump in the code and have some fun. What you'll begin to notice is that a lot of the methods across the page elements of a slide are very similar. So if you watched the last episode on shapes, you should be prepared to tackle this one on images. So again, first you need to start out with a presentation and a slide, and then you can get the page elements from that slide, but if you want the method specific to an image, this is not going to be enough. And so say if we type page element, we can't say if we want to get the URL of the image, on a slide, we can't just say get content URL. It's not going to recognize this because again, this is of the class or of the type page element. And that makes sense because again, if you just get an any old page element, say this line, uh, this line does not have a content URL. This, this line is not stored anywhere on the internet as an image. That doesn't make sense really. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to get your page element and then say to App Script, yup, this is, treat this as an image, not a page element, but as an image specifically. And again, there are a lot of methods that you can do to all of these um, page elements. So if you said something like page element dot um, get, uh, get height, or if you said, um, say, send to back, like these are generic methods that you can apply to any old page element. But if you want to get those element or those methods that are specific to an image, you'd have to use this method right here as image to convert it into an image. And then after that, you can say get content URL just like that. So that is as image. Again, this is this was covered a little bit more in depth in in the shapes episode. But let's just store that for now in a constant called image. Alrighty, so uh, this is one way to do it, of course, you can always get your page element and then after that convert those page elements into their respective types by saying as image or as shape. But there is a simpler way if you're just concerned about the images on the slide, you can say slide dot, instead of saying get um, page elements, you could just say get images and this will bypass the page elements, it'll go directly to looking at all the images and it will return an array of all of the images that are on that slide. So it's going to ignore all of these other page elements and just say, yep, this is an image. I'm just going to return uh, this one right here. Already, let's just log or log that just to verify it is indeed working. Hit save, we'll hit run, and we'll view our logs. So again, if we are correct about this, it should only return one image, and that will be the sole element in the array. And there it is right there. There is our in image, and we can be pretty confident it's talking about this one right there. Alrighty, so that is how to get images, but how do you write or how do you uh, insert images to a slide? Well, it's incredibly simple. You just say slide, the slide that you want to insert your image to. You say dot, and you say insert image. So you have five different uh, options right here. You can insert an image if it is structured as a blob. Again, a blob is a binary large object. So usually that will just be through a picture that you find on your drive. Here I have one here. But uh, again, it could be any blob that you have that is of the type of, um, well, it doesn't have to be of the type of image, but it just has to be like a JPEG or a PNG, something like that. So I have, again, one right here. You also could insert an image that is of the type of image. So say there was already a pre-existing image on a presentation and you like that one, so you copied it and then you put it right in this optional parameter slot and then you could insert that image to the slide of your choosing. So again, that is another simple way to insert an image. The other way to insert an image is if that image is on the internet and it has a URL. So if it has a URL, you would just copy that URL of the image and then paste it right in here. And then of course you could always give it optional uh, positioning parameter arguments right here, such as uh, the number of pixel pixels 
uh, that is left of the slide. So how, how far to the left in pixels do you want your image to be? And then top with height. We went over that in the shapes um, episode, last episode. So let's just select this one right here. So let's say there's an image that is on the internet that you really like. Say if you go to pixels.com and you're looking at all this amazing free stock photos. And by the way, all of this is very professionally done and it's free to boot. So this is an incredible website. But let's say you really like this photo right here. So you would get its image URL by saying copy image address. You would go back into your code editor and then you would put two quotes. In between those quotes, you would paste your image URL, and then you'd hit a semicolon, and then what you could do is hit save and hit run. Again, we're not positioning this anywhere, so it's gonna be in the top left-hand corner, and there it is. <laughs> it's taken up actually half of the entire slide, but that is okay, that is, uh, here is our image. And we could always, again, reposition this or scale it down, um, but this is our image that we got directly from this URL, which is hosted by uh, Pixels. Alrighty, so that is pretty cool. Let me just delete that for now though, because it's taken up half of our slide. All right, so that's how to insert an image. Now these next two methods I'm going to showcase in tandem. So it's going to be image.getContent URL, and then the next one is image.getSource, oops, getSource URL. So what's the difference between get content URL and get source URL? Well, the uh, URL that we just pasted, this is a source URL right here. So how do we know that? It's because that it was sourced directly from the internet. It has its own specific place on the internet. It's stored on someone's servers um, and it is housed or stored on the internet, right? But let's say you have a image like this one this is not stored on anyone's servers. This is this was uploaded directly from my laptop. I just went up here, say, and then I uploaded it from the computer from my own computer. So this isn't again, this isn't really stored on the internet anywhere. It doesn't really have its own source URL. This isn't really sourced from anywhere, right? But say we needed a say we needed to have a URL for this image. Well, that's where content URL comes from. This is going Google is going to provide a temporary URL to this image. Again, I say temporary because it will expire after some time. But if if we now hit uh, save and we hit run, again, this image right here is we're talking about this right here. So that is this image, uh, the page element that we converted into an image. So anyways, if we hit view and logs, we'll see that our source URL is returning null, which makes complete sense because again, this isn't sourced from any anywhere on the internet. This was uploaded directly to my laptop or from my laptop. But now if we take a look at the content URL, this is the URL that Google is going to provide. It's a temporary link, so it will expire after some time. But if we need it, again, some place to access it on the internet, this is now going to be the URL to access that, which is pretty cool. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're deliberating in between when to use source URL and when to use the content URL. Alrighty, let's just comment those out for now, and we'll take a look at our last method for today, and that is replace. So if you have an image that you want to replace, this is incredibly popular, actually. Uh, a popular uh, method to use. But let's say you have an image that you want to replace. You can replace it with a blob source or you can replace it with a image URL. Since we already looked at the URL though, well, let's now try this blob source. So again, the blob source is basically any file uh, that's somewhat unstructured, although a very popular blob is a image file. And we are getting that directly from our drive app. We also have an optional parameter called crop. Basically what this means, if we set this to true, it defaults to false, but if we set it to true, then it's going to crop the image so that it fits within this original image dimension. If we don't say true to that, it's going to, again, default to false, and it's going to have its own dimensions. It's not to, it's not going to fit within this uh, pre-existing image dimension. Alrighty, so let's just showcase that. We'll say crop equals to true. And blob source is going to be our picture right here. 
So if we hit save and we hit run, it's now going to take this photo of uh, which is Duke, and we are now going to replace the original image with this photo. And again, it's going to retain the dimensions of the original image, which is pretty flipping cool. And you can tell that it indeed replaced it and not just overlapped it because if you move that image, you can see that it is indeed only one image and it was replaced already. So that is the methods that I want to showcase for today. If you like this and you learned something, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you in the next one.